Hey Roses, it's Sugar Rose Studios and today I'm going to be doing another craft with me video. So things have been pretty hectic. I've had a bunch of commissions and a bunch of orders which has been so much fun for me. Um, school has been a little crazy too so that has been an additional thing but keeping it all under control. So some people at my barn actually commissioned some horses for me. Um, so this is one that I'm working on um as well as this chestnut and then i also have this nap strapper that i'm working on which is going to be a crazy cool um leopard pattern that i'm super excited about so something another thing that's really interesting um i started trying to do dabbles in my airbrush which is super hard and i decided to get a really small detailed airbrush so I'm going to be doing a video um, explaining stuff about my airbrush, but basically my airbrush is a 0.35 millimeter nozzle and I got one that's a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, so I'll be able to do more detailed stuff like these dapples, which kind of ended up happening because I got dry tip on my airbrush, which is kind of an easy thing, but anyways, I also tried it on, not you, I also tried it on this horse too, so it was pretty tricky to do, but you know, working on it. And on my Instagram stories, you guys may have seen that the primer that I was using on this horse was literally killing me and I finally got him all smooth and he's going to be ready to go. Decided I'm going to be making him a buckskin um, Sabino with some like light dapples in his stomach area, which is very exciting. And I decided to print out a super useful chart for um, when I was doing this roan. Sorry, my nail is like so gross right now. Don't look at it. Um, this hair chart for, um, I was doing roaming for a commission and that commission actually turned out really well. I was surprised that I made so much improvement since like I just did on the horse really similar to right before. And yeah, this like new desk is totally working for me. I love it. Something that has been super helpful for me is that I have my iPad here and I use that just as a reference for everything that I do. So that has been like awesome and I actually figured out that I can like open multiple tabs at once which is perfect literally perfect so I can watch like something on Netflix and look at a reference photo which is like stellar <laughs> because sometimes I watch Netflix but most of the time actually I watch YouTube documentaries like PBS documentaries I don't know I'm just like such a big documentary fan i know that's not what most people watch or i'll watch crash course like random stuff um i'm really enjoying crash course psychology um i took ap psychology this year uh and i liked it but i'm not taking the ap exam um and i think i decided what college i'm gonna go to so that's pretty exciting although it's really confusing because a school that I was put on the waitlist for just said that I got a scholarship but that I'm still on the waitlist so I don't know that that was a little confusing that one is in Ohio which is kind of cool because it's a little bit farther away and like I always wanted to go a little bit farther away because I don't really like upstate New York that much but you know it's all good I guess so so I'm right now I'm just taking off this random red that got on this horse's hoof i don't know how i think it was just the spray paint i usually use it spray paint as a base so i'm gonna guess that's probably what the problem was and another thing that i've been noticing with my repaints is that for white markings i usually do like a bright white but I know like there was a while where I was like always looking at repaints and I was like that white is so unrealistic like it is way too white horses are never going to be that clean and I guess maybe on my shop I should include oh my god I should include like an option like do you want bright white or do you want like kind of dirty white because I feel like that's a bit of a personal preference um, just because some people want their horses to look clean and some people want their horses to look like they're actually going to look in real life, which is not that clean. So, I mean, 
I don't know, I feel like that's something I should ask because if you have something that is white, like it's not gonna be actually that white. So, I don't know. All right, so I have to do this horse's facial marking. And when I do facial markings, I always use really fine brushes. So I'll find, I have so many brushes over here, you guys. Um, so actually I know I say I hate apple barrel paint, but I started using it recently really watered down for um, just like the base of some paint markings and it really helps get like color. So what I do whenever I'm using apple barrel, I have the paint obviously and then I have this little water needle thing that I always use, it's really controlled. And I always mix it with some water. And that just really helps it get watered down so it's not drying clumpy. And even you can see like in this paint tray, like it dries and it can crack and it gets really clumpy. And a lot of people like apple barrel because it's so cheap. It's like 50 cents for this kind of a container, but so I always just look at my reference and <laughs> hopefully your reference won't turn off. And then I just really carefully go along with what I'm seeing. And something that is a little weird is that I usually like doing like my own horses, like just not commissions that are like portrait horses because I'm always so afraid that I'm gonna mess up the markings. And then the people are going to be like, you made a marking that doesn't look like my horse. And then I'm like, oh my god. So, but I always try my best. So I always like do these much more slow than I would do like my own horses. Because I'm not like trying to make, I mean, I usually use a reference. So, but like you can always deviate a little bit from the reference when it's just your own horse. But when it is kind of like someone else's horse that you're trying to make look exactly like it. It's like, um, yeah, I can't mess this up now, but yeah. So this was one of the horses I was doing, and then the other one is actually really cool. It has, like, some black uh, around the eye, which they, um, the person that commissioned me was like, yeah, just make sure that you get that, because, like, it's not, like, mud stains, like, it's actually, like, part of her pattern, so I was, I thought that was really cool. Um... Just seeing the amount of variation in horse color is so amazing. I mean, it just blows my mind, honestly. And I haven't had too much time, honestly, to read that genetics book that I got, but the genetics of horse color, like, I, I want to read more about it, but it's just amazing the amount of color variation that horses can have in general. So, and I think it's really cool that I'm also taking, like, my genetics class at the same time, which, I mean, doesn't really have anything to do with horse genetics. I mean, right now we were doing, like, DNA, um, stuff. Uh, it's gonna be confusing, and probably a lot of people in here will understand it, but we're doing, like, um, PCR, which is polymer chase chain reaction, and it's really fun. Um, and we're doing our own DNA, actually, to see if we have a um, if we're homozygous or heterozygous for a specific gene, so, yeah, uh, that's all I'll say about that, because it's a little unrelated, but, yes. I don't know how I'm gonna get these, like, weird markings on the face. I think I'm gonna have to do, I was thinking about this last night, actually. I don't know what I want to do for that, because I could either do, like, a little bit of gray of Liquitex, which is one of the paints that I use. The thing is, I don't know if that's really more gray or brown. I feel like that's like a darker gray, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'll use... I also have Vallejo um, paints that I use. And they're like very, very pigmented. And you usually only need one layer. But the thing is, I feel like... I don't know what I want to do. Dark gray. I feel like that's that's gray, but I can't tell. I usually use color picker and like um, on Instagram, I use the color tool and I'll like get a swatch of the horse colors that I'm doing. Like, um, I think I did it for one. Okay, well, anyways, it's too far away. <laughs> um, mm, so when the person was telling me about this horse, they were like, it's like they have manure stains like on their face. And I was like, oh my God, that's so funny. Uh, so they have one on their butt too. I don't know. I feel like that's more... 
I think I should use burnt umber for that. Unless I have like a darker brown. No. Okay, so I'm gonna do burnt umber. And kind of just. I feel like it's like a little bit gray though. It's like a gray black. Alright, that's what I'll do. Mix a little bit of black with a little bit of burnt umber. I'm gonna get our mixing tray here. What is this color? What am I doing here? Um, oh, that'd be a perfect color for the tail, actually. Okay, well, keep that there. Okay, so don't need you. My table always gets very... Kind of forget to put things away, and then it all gets... I've been trying really hard, though, to, like, keep things clean on here. Just to give myself a workspace, but even though I feel like most people are like, oh, they look at them and they're like, how do you do anything? It's just easier for me in general to just have <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs> Alright, so this one on the booty looks like this. Okay, yeah, yeah, this, this looks good. Okay, yeah, it kind of really does look like a manure stain to be honest, <laughs> but it's okay. All horses are unique. I think it's really cool that some horses have like areas of chestnut and then like black splotches. I find that incredible. Like that's just amazing. And okay, this one. It kind of reminds me how like some some people have like a skin um, pigmentation disorder where it's like they have like blotches of white skin and black skin. I feel like that's pretty similar. It's almost similar to like when a horse has all these different like random color variations pretty cool um okay mm -hmm. and her hair is covering most of where this marking would be so not i don't want to like overdo what i'm doing here but i think that was the only one i'd have to look at the other pictures I think that's that's pretty much it. Um can't really see the mane in that picture. I feel like the mane is a little bit darker. But I think I'll just add a little bit of raw umber. I could totally be mixing these up. Burnt umber and raw umber. I always feel like I mix up. I'm just gonna add that a little bit to the tips. And just so there's a little bit of a separation, you know, between the body and the mane, although on chestnuts I feel like most of the time their color, their hair color is really similar to um, what their body color is. So, but sometimes it's different. Another thing I was so mad about was that my MPV uh, order, like you guys know that I had a horse with a broken tail in it, and then I emailed them over the weekend and I was like, so can I get a, a, um, a replacement because I paid so much for shipping? And then they gave me a refund, even though I specifically asked for a replacement because I paid so much for shipping. And then they were like, well, we thought that it was urgent. And I'm like, wait, but... Like, I, I just wanted the model. It's not urgent. Like, I didn't need a refund right away. So I'm a little disappointed in that. But I'm going to email them back and be like, I really would like a replacement. Because that Southlands replica Brumby mare, like, I can't get that in the United States without paying, like, a bunch of money for shipping. So a little frustrated, but it's all good. So another thing that's very exciting is that I will probably be showing this summer. I don't know on what horse or what, but I think that's pretty cool. And another thing is that I'm definitely going to be riding in college. Like, I don't know. hundred. I mean, I'm pretty sure I know where I want to go, but I don't know 100%. Um, just because uh, I said, like, I got on a waiting list on a school that I liked, but... And I got a scholarship, too, but then I'm, like, confused because if I got a scholarship, but I'm still on the waiting list. So, I don't know. That was really confusing. 
but I think I want to bring, I don't know what I'm going to do in college, to be honest, um, with my life stuff. I want to bring some stuff, but, like, um, I think if I have a room with more than one person like myself in it, it could be a little weird. Like, I might not be able to make videos, and that would be really sad, so, um, yeah, that would be a little problematic, but, you know... Because even though if I do go to a school that is near my house, I don't really want to come home because I want to be independent and everything. So that is a consideration at the moment. But I would like to bring some like tech stuff or repainting stuff with me and then still be able to make videos because I don't want to like give all this up. Um, I find it like really fun to make commission, do commissions and and like make horses for people. So, I don't know guys, but hoping I can figure out a way to make it work. But this summer, I'm definitely going to be doing so many commissions. I'm really psyched. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have such a fun, fun time. I'm going to make a bunch of videos too. Um, hopefully do some more photography, like crazy videos like I did a few summers ago. Or two, last summer? I can't remember. <laughs> and also... um definitely some updated barn tours i have not gotten a chance i'm gonna clean up my barn like as soon as possible because i i finally did the ear bonnet tutorial which like no one has watched which i was a little disappointed in because everyone was requesting that um so but yeah so i'll probably do a barn tour soon oh and also i'm on tiktok now so it's sugar rose videos it doesn't have any periods or anything in it. it's just sugar rose videos so if you're interested in following me on tiktok go do that i actually was opposed for to tiktok for so long um i don't really know why i was like no nah, tiktok is terrible but it's actually kind of fun to make videos on there it's just i don't i don't like watching all these other videos all the time it's like too much work i have too much other stuff to do but um it is it's good it's really cool to see what other people do people are so creative okay i need to make like a dirty white color yellow white oh well i can't just use this one that one's kind of a yellow white okay so when i'm doing socks or stockings or any leg markings i always use this kind of like flat brush so that i don't get build up of paint and as i said i do my base with apple barrel but then i'll do over layer um with liquitex just to give it a little bit more protection because Liquitex is more of a, um, it's a medium acrylic, like it's a medium, um, body acrylic, which means it has like a sort of plasticky, it's like a mix between liquid and plastic, like there's, um, thick body acrylics, which are super thick and like super opaque, and they will just glob on your horse. And then there's liquid acrylics, which are like perfect for airbrushing. And like they're super like flowy, like they're very vis um, not viscous at all, but medium is like m like the in between viscosity. And that's what I usually use for most stuff on the horses. But um, I always use this part of the Liquitex because. Apple Barrel also has a tendency to chip and like scratch and like get random dirt on it and it's just like a very weird texture when you're done. So I really only use it as a watered down base and then I will apply other paints over it. But it does give like, it makes it a lot easier, you don't have to do as many white layers which is really helpful because white is such a pain in the butt to do like when people wonder why paints like pinto horses and appaloosa horses are more expensive in my shop is because working with white is a pain in the butt because you want everything to look actually white and then i was saying again there's like a dirty white and a clean white and sometimes i feel like i like the dirty white look better but then some people really like the bright white so it's kind of hard to choose in between when you don't know what people want, like the person that's buying it. So, 
that was always something I consider, like especially on draft horses too, when they have all the feathers on the on the bottom of their leg area. I think that most of the time the feathers are pretty dirty, like they're more like a yellowish tint. And I like doing that better than just making it like an unusually white white. Like this is kind of an unusually white white. I tried putting in some like yellow, but it's like in the corner here. Um, there we go. So but some people like that. Some people like the really stark contrast between the white and the other color of their horse. And that can be really striking on paints. I feel like a lot of people like that on paints. But also, your horse has to be very clean if you want it to be that white. <laughs> Another thing I really do want to work on is my hooves. I think that I could really improve on them. I started making sure that I'm adding chestnuts all the time because on some horses I wasn't really adding chestnuts but now I'm making sure I'm adding chestnuts all the time. Um, I've been doing a little bit more detail work on my muzzles which I think I could still also improve on. Um, what's another thing? been adding a lot more highlights and like low and shadows in my, in my tails and mane, manes and tails. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much, and then I've been doing a lot more stuff with the airbrush and then also pastels, so that's been, like, more, um, bigger contrast between the lighter, like, the highlights and the shadows, so that has been a really good experiment for me, and then also dip, doing some runs. Alright, this is a crazy commission that I'm working on, which is going to be super duper fun to do. He is going to be a crazy nap stripper. I actually re-sculpted his tail um, to be very sassy. And <laughs> we're going to do some nap stripper -y stuff. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get all those spots perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get started on this. done a few nap sharper horses before but this one is pretty pretty cool I just want to show you this is a commission commission I finished for Wind Valley Farm and they're ordering a few more horses but they're sending me some models that I can paint. Here are all the horses I have for sale right now. Um excluding this random Sharif, I don't know why he's here. Um so this is one that I recently finished that was really tough for me because it's like a roan, a strawberry roan, um, and the pattern was really random and I did dry brush with this and it was really tough for me because the pattern was like so random and it wasn't like a paint um where it was like kind of like very straightforward and like you know you kind of have lines to go through um i decided to sell this girl that i did she is a custom on the double mare and you can put a saddle and stuff on her now because her mane was basically blocking that and she's this like really beautiful brown dapple um i'm in love with her but i'm gonna sell her and part of the reason is because the airbrush that i just got was super expensive um, I showed you guys this one before. He is stunning. I don't know how he hasn't sold yet. He's gorgeous. And that is going to be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my website. I have customs for sale. And subscribe to my channel. Check out my Instagram. I just got a TikTok. And I also have Facebook and stuff. So go check it out. All the deets are going to be in the description. And don't forget to stay sweet. Mwah.